Today, in a slight departure from our usual motorcycle centric video series, in this case the GT750 being the most recent one, we'll be instead working on a glow plug relay from my Mercedes E290 station wagon. As far as I know, this part is also shared with the early sprinter vans. You can see here, well, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but it's 019-545-6932. My symptoms were, after starting the car, the glow plug light would come back on. So I knew something was wrong. I thought originally it was just a bad glow plug, but it turns out a bad glow plug took out the relay, which I'll show you how in a minute. And also, I have a star diagnostic system. So I plugged that into my car and it informed me that I had a glow plug over amperage fault. Which in this case means that it blew one of the internal fuses. Yes, that's right. Mercedes in their infinite wisdom decided to depart from the older style relay which had a nice easily accessible fuse on the outside of it to an internal fuse. So what they actually mean for you to do is every time you have a glow plug that goes dead short, in this case I do is have one, I have to change that after I've done this, that you change the entire hundred some odd dollar relay. Which I think is just stupid. So having hunted around the internet and read for several fixes, what the sprinter guys do is cut out the internal fuses and mount an external fuse block on top of the relay, moving the fuses to the outside so that you can easily change them and see when one's blown. Also identifying which glow plug is bad, which makes so much sense to me. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So first up, let's crack this thing open. So I have previously had this open before. When they're new, they have a sealant, sort of like a caulking-like glue all the way around the outside that you need to scrape out. And then, if I remember correctly, there's just a couple tabs that you pry back, and this entire piece will slide off. So let's see if we can get this thing open. It's been a little while since I had it apart initially to diagnose it. It was the middle of summer and I had many other things to do and that I wanted to do. And being as the E290 really doesn't need glow plugs to start in warmer weather, I just ignored it. Four out of five was more than enough. However, I can't remember where the tabs were. thought they were around the sides here. It doesn't seem to be wanting to give up its secrets. There we go. So as you can see, this is your relay. These are the feeds to each of your five glow plugs. There's actually six pins on this, one's not used. I believe the same similar relay is used for the six cylinder models. This little pin here is your 12 volt feed from the battery, which is always live, so be careful when you take it apart. And this three pin connector here is your CAN bus for the computer to control the system. Inside, you have a large copper main relay right here. So you can see that turns the power to the glow plugs on and off. And here are three of the fusible links and here are the other three. As you can see this one here has burned out. The reason there's two sides to each of these as far as I'm aware is one of them feeds the computer to tell that there's power going to that glow plug and one is the feed that goes to the glow plug. So basically what we're going to be doing is soldering five wires onto the switched side of this copper relay 
taking them out into the fuse block and back into the hot, well, the switched side of these fuses, which we'll cut out and replace. So, let's see what happens, shall we? I'm going to solder five wires onto the main copper switched side of the 12 volt lead. So I'm going to start by tinning all these wires and tinning the bottom of this plate so that it's easier to solder it all together. So having my soldering iron all heated up, let's tin the wires. It's a nice even coating of solder. This is called tinning a wire. We're going to do that to all five. Here we have all five wires tinned on one end. But I'm going to be tinning the bottom of this plate here. Hopefully, I won't need to sand it to get it to accept solder. But we'll see. It may have a coating on it of some sort. awfully big plate, so we also may need to turn up my soldering iron get enough heat into it which I think we're going to have to do it's a big piece of copper crank this thing up to max which in this case is 480 degrees So nice. I got lots of room to bond my wires. There we go. So you can see I've tinned the plate. So what you missed there, my SD card got full. Was that I discovered that my soldering iron does not have the thermal capacity to solder five of these onto that plate. So instead, I'm going to solder on two bigger wires, and hopefully it'll have the capacity to do that and there'll be enough room on this plate to do it. Nope, gonna need a bigger iron. So I'm not usually a fan of these soldering gun type soldering irons. They're not usually very well suited to the sort of work I do. That being said, they do put out a lot more oomph than my little iron does. So we'll see if this works. So now, we need to clip the fuse side at the bottom and solder a wire onto it. So now we're going to try and solder a wire onto this broken fusible link. First I'm going to tin it, and now I'm going to try and solder the wire onto it. Not a lot of working space in here, so I'm going to pretty much block your entire view. Just the way it's going to be. And that's one. Cut 
cut out the link for do and do that one. Rinse and repeat. So now that we have affixed all the wires to the glow plug relay, and to drill a couple holes in the shell to allow them to exit. So after screwing around, slots ended up being the better way to go. Couldn't get on otherwise, I'll silicone all around this and make it watertight afterwards. Under the hood, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. We'll cross that bridge later. I also did all six, even though one's not used, just in case I got the wrong one, or for whatever reason later on need to use it. So now we're going to crimp on some connectors to attach to the new fuse block. So I ran out of time and light yesterday to show the finished product. This is what we've come up with. What I ended up doing is the two red wires that were the leads I brought out and split. I soldered three blue wires onto each of the two reds. So one red feeds half, one other red feeds half. It's not quite a 50-50 split because there's five cylinders. So one is carrying a little bit more current. But looking at the size of the wire that feeds this, I think my number 10 is probably bigger. So it, it should be fine. As you can see, I've also smeared silicone all over the top here to seal up the uh, slots and holes I put in here. I, pro I will put a little more silicone on it probably before I'm done, just to be sure. And I also plan on making a bracket for this that'll hold it right about here, nice and square, so that it looks a little bit better than just hanging here. There you can see the uh, two splits I soldered the three blues onto the two reds. Just have it tucked in here right now so it doesn't jump around too much. But yeah, it works like a hot dam. The glow plug light has gone out on my dash, so that's exactly the way it should be. I also pulled all five of my glow plugs just to make sure that none of them were shorted and causing the uh, initial failure of the glow plug relay. However, it turns out that all of them tested fine with the jump box and glowed, and all of them showed the same resistance. So it must have just been a case of the uh, fusible link and the glow plug really becoming tired and blowing. Which is just another symptom of the poor design. It should really have an external fuse to begin with. But this solves the problem for now and hopefully forever.